We will be talking in this video about 7.5, the method of least squares. Um, I know you've read through the book, of course, uh, but I just kind of want to reiterate, <clears throat> I probably say that every time, don't I? <laughs> this idea of what, what the method of least squares is. So if I have some data points, so I maybe have a data set, um, you know, that I don't know, does something like this. Okay, and I, the basically the idea of least squares is asking, is can I find a line that I could kind of draw through this data set that could model that data set and that could possibly predict what that data set is going to do. <clears throat> so if you see, I have this line here and we like, you know, mathematicians like lines. Lines are easy to use. Um, you know, we know the slope of them easily. We can predict trends with them because we, if we know the slope, it's easy to say, you know, I'm increasing by so many students a month if I'm looking at maybe student population or enrollment in a college. Um, so, so the lines aren't this line isn't perfect, right? Because clearly there's some difference between the actual points the line would give me and my yellow points that are the actual data that I'm looking at. So what the least squares method does is it takes this difference between the points. Okay, so if if I use the line as my actual as on this one, there's a small little difference, same right here. Um, if I use this line as my actual data set, we can tell that these gray lines right here show the difference between what the line predicts and the actual data. And so what we do then, the method of least squares, well, if I call this guy x1, y1, call this one x2, y2, obviously, <coughs> excuse me, x3, y3, all the way, four, five, six, seven, I have like seven of them here x7, y7, I don't have to have seven of them, I can have as many as I want, then we define this guy right here as e sub 1, okay? Um, so e sub 1, the reason we call it e is because it is the error between the line, which I'm going to call this line y equals ax plus b, that's just our form, you know, of um, some function. Um, Sorry, let me turn off some of my stuff making noise. Um, that's just the form of some line. Y equals mx plus b. We'll just put a and uh, b instead. So if I want this distance right here, this my this error right between what the line would give me and the actual value in the, of this point right here. Well, what I want basically is I want the distance between what this point would give me at x1. So that would be or what the line would give me at x1. So I would evaluate this line at x1, and then I would subtract the y-coordinate, right? Because here's my x1 right here. So I would, this point right here on the line, if you look at that, would be ax, whoops, excuse me. Oh my goodness. Whoops. <laughs> We're getting a little, maybe I've had too much coffee today. You don't hear me say that very often in these videos. So if I look at this point on the line right here, the point would be a one x1 and then my line evaluated at x1. So what would the error be? It'd be just the difference between my y values. Okay, so this is what we're going to call the error between the line, my line of, we're going to call it the line of best fit here in a little bit, the line of best fit and the actual data points. <clears throat> And we will have that for each one of these points, right? So this would be a of x2 plus b. This would be my that function of the line for x2, y2. And these are all the errors. And then what we do is we call the actual error right here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to square these. The reason we square them isn't some mysterious reason. The reason we square them is because some of these distances are gonna be positive and some are negative. Like for example, this guy right here, this is gonna be the error E sub two is going to be positive because the line is bigger than the actual data point. But E sub one right here is going to be negative. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna square those just to keep everything positive, right? So my actual error that you saw would be E1 squared, whoops, plus E2 squared, okay, plus E3 squared, plus dot, 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 and we have seven points, but you can have as many points as we need. And this is what we're talking about, E. This E right here is the least squares 
error. So if I want to get the best fit line, if I want this purple line to be the best fit line, what I want to do, so the best fit line is one that minimizes my error or my E. Okay, because I mean, it doesn't really matter about the squared, right? If I find the minimum of this whole thing, then that's going to be the minimum of, you know, just this E if I actually didn't square them. So wherever this, the minimum of this occurs is going to be wherever the minimum of this guy occurs. Okay, so um, I hope that kind of makes sense. I know you read through the book, but I hope that that kind of makes sense. And this is what we call, so once we find that, once we minimize that, this line of best fit, and I'll let you write that from your book, this line of best fit, this is what we call the least squares line. Or the regression line. Or you guys may have seen this called um, the line of best fit or a linear regression. When we do this on our calculator, we'll see it's a linear regression. Okay, so, so speaking of calculator, what I want to show first is how to do this without the calculator, and then we'll do it with the calculator to see that um, things are so much easier with the calculator. So let's go to a new layer here, and let's do an example. All right, so example, find the least squares line for the data set below using partial derivatives. So this is where Okay, so this is where um, our, our calculus is coming in. So you guys, I'm sure you're wondering, where where's the calculus, Sarah? Show me the calculus. Well, here it is. This is why this section is in chapter seven when we're talking about partial derivatives. So I'm gonna just use three points right here. We'll use more points once we get the calculator out. But what I wanna think about again, so let's look at look at where these points are. Oh, I shouldn't have maybe done eight, but that's all right. We can we can handle it. So um, one four is going to be right here. Two five is just up one, and then three eight is going to be all the way up here. So if I look at a line, if I just kind of eyeball it, you know, I think a line of best fit. Well, that's not that great, but we can we can look this up in our calculator too. So maybe my line of best fit is something like that. So I know a couple things, right? I know this line is going to have a positive slope. Um, I know its y-intercept is going to be somewhere in here, maybe between one and three somewhere. Um, and let's let's see what happens. So I'm going to define e sub one. So remember, I'm going to call this line y equals ax plus b. Okay. So the difference of e one. That's the difference between the line. Okay and that line evaluated at one, subtracting the y value, which is four, okay? So I have E1 is going to be A times one plus B minus four. E2 is going to be A times two plus B, because that's my, that's my X coordinate right here, minus five. And E3, I'm gonna give myself some room here, so I'm gonna, I know we're gonna be doing some stuff is a times three plus b minus eight. Again, this is just the difference between the line, okay, and the y value of the point. That's just the, this distance right here, that difference. And so now we can, we can build our error, our least squares error. So I'm gonna take e1, and I'm gonna square it. I'm not gonna actually square it, I'm just gonna put a square, I'm not gonna actually do it. e2, I'm just gonna rewrite this a little bit squared plus e3, which is 3a plus b minus 8. 
squared. And I guess I should state, what is our whole goal here? <laughs> that might be useful. Our whole goal is to find this line right here. So what do we need to find? We need to find the slope of the line and the y-intercept to find the equation of that line. So let's find the minimum of this. So how do we find the minimum? This is a function of two variables. What are my two variables? A and B. So I'm going to take the derivative with respect to A, bring the two down. This is going to be I think I grabbed a different color in there. This is going to be my chain rule, right? Leave the inside, take one away, so that gives me one, times the derivative of the inside with respect to a, plus, bring the two down, leave the inside, take one away, times the derivative with respect to a is two, plus two, three a plus b minus eight, take one away, times the derivative of the inside, which is 3. So e sub a, if I simplify this a little bit, um, man, let's see what I get. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to simplify this a little bit. I'm going to add the a. So I have 2a, 4a times 2 is 8. And then I have 6a times 3 is 18. So I'm going to grab my calculator because I don't trust myself to do... Um, I really don't trust myself to do arithmetic in my head, especially when I'm working with you guys here. Um, and then let's see, what else do we have? So I have, um, let's look at the Bs. So I have 2B plus 4B. So that's 2 plus 4, which I know is 6, but I'm just making sure. And then I have 3 times 2 is 6 times B. So we get 12. So plus 12B. And then if I look at my constants, I get a negative 6. I have um, 2 times negative 5 is negative 10, times 2 is a negative 20, so negative, my negative 20. And then I have 6 times 8, which is 48. So I have a minus 74, and this all equals 0. Okay, now I want to find E sub B, so I go back up to here. I'm going to take the derivative um, again. Now I'm going to, when I do the chain rule, I'm going to multiply by the derivative of the inside with respect to B. Now the great thing is B is not multiplied by anything. It's, well, it's multiplied by 1, so I can just go ahead and take the derivative of the outside, and I don't need to worry about taking that derivative of the inside. And let's clean this up a little bit. So how many B A's do I have? I have 2 plus 4 is 6, plus 6 is 12. And then I have 2b's plus 4b's is 6b's plus 2 more b's is 8b. And so you can do all this too, you know. And then I have negative 8 minus 10, that's a negative 18. Negative 18 minus 16 is a negative 34. And I set this equal to 0. Okay, and then I just have to solve. So what am I solving then? I'm going to solve this equation here for... Maybe, maybe I'll solve that for A or for B, it doesn't matter, and then I'm going to plug it into this equation here, okay? And so I'm going to just go ahead and do that and um, tell you what that is, and I'll let you, well, maybe I should show you guys. So if I solve this guy, let's say I just solve for, well, it doesn't really matter, um, let's solve for A. So if I solve this for A, I'm going to subtract those guys over, and then I have 12 divided by 28, which is 3 7 so I get a negative... 3 7 b plus, and then 74 divided by 28, I know I could probably do this in my head, is 37 fourteenths, okay? So I'm going to put that into, into this a right here. So I have negative 3 7 b plus 37 fourteenths plus 8b minus 34. And let's see what we get there. So it's a negative 36 sevenths B. Ooh, 37 times 12, I'm gonna need help with that. <laughs> Plus 444, that's a cool number. Fourteenths, right? Plus 8B. And I'll just move that 34 over, okay? So negative 36 sevenths plus eight is 20 sevenths. B, and I'm going to subtract the 40, 444 divided by 14, and I could simplify that. I'm going to use my calculator. This equals 16 7. So this actually equals looks pretty nice. Multiply both sides by 7 twentieths. The 7s cancel out, right? 7 twentieths. Okay. 
and I get 16 over 20, divide everything by four. What do we get B to B? Then we get four fifths to be B. And does that make sense? Yeah, I think it definitely could. Four fifths, I guess, would be way down here. But you know, if my line was quite steep, it might be a little steeper than I think. Um, so I think the four fifths probably makes sense. Let me check my math really quick. So I see my mistake. You guys, I just checked my math. You guys probably saw this a long time ago and you've been probably yelling at the, the screen here. This should be 76. My goodness. So um, that'll just change a couple things. You know what? I'm kind of glad I did this because I, I want you to see that sometimes in mathematics, um, you make mistakes. And you know what? That's that's okay. So this becomes 19 sevenths. Um, you know, and, and it's not that big of a deal. We just go back through and we, we check our work and we make sure we did it right. Um, and if we didn't do it right, it's okay. We go, we go back through and we change it. So, um, you know, even I do that, which, which is, should not be, it's not super surprising to, you know, my students who have had me or anything, but I'm just making changes right here. And let me tell you how I knew I made a mistake. Well, I checked it with my calculator. So what I did was I, um, let me change, whoops. I, I'm gonna show you how to do this on your calculator. So I checked this on my calculator and my calculator told me it was the wrong answer. So um, over here, I actually, we get 10 sevenths. And, oh, I don't think that's right either though. Geez, sorry guys, I'm making a big mistake. Let me check one more time. Okay, so I just went ahead and paused the video and I found my mistake. I had made this B, this is, was an eight. You guys probably saw that. Now that's a six. So I just didn't want to do that and you didn't have to watch it. So I get B to equal five thirds and then I can put that five thirds back in here. And what you end up actually getting is you get A to B two. So that kind of makes sense because five thirds, if you think of five thirds, that's like one and two thirds. So one and two thirds is maybe right here. And then it has a slope of two. So my line actually does something like this, okay? So that's how we're gonna do this. Take your time with it. I did not take my time. I was trying to rush to get, you know, to get, make this video not too horribly long. Um, Take your time on these. There's one on the homework where you have to do this method right here, this method by hand, and you'll there'll be one on the exam, probably like that if there's room on the exam as well. So the other method, I'm gonna show you how to use your calculator instead. So once I show you how to use your calculator, then um, we'll, we'll call this good. But let's, let's look again at these data points. So the data points we had, right, were one, four, two, five, and three eight. So it looks like most of you have like an, a TI-84 or TI-83. I'm gonna show you here with the TI-84. Um, this is gonna be very, very similar to the TI-83. You can also get online and just look up um, linear regression graphing calculator and you can watch some YouTube videos if you don't like mine, which is, I don't take that personally, so no worries. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. So here's my calculator and again, unless it says on the homework that you must use partial derivatives to do this, all of the problems you can use this method. So they show you how to do it by hand in the book. Um, if you'd rather do it by hand, please just let me know and I can give you the formulas that they have um, for doing this all by hand. But if you don't wanna do it by hand, I really recommend using the calculator. So what you're gonna do first is we're gonna go to this stat button right here. And what I want is I want to edit, okay? So I'm gonna edit, um, I'm gonna edit a list. So I went to stat. You can see over here that my keys history is here. And then I'm gonna press enter, okay? And now I have my list one and my list two. If there are numbers in there, either go through and clear each one or scroll up to L1, press clear, and then press enter, and it'll clear that whole list to you, okay? List for you, okay? And so in list one, I'm gonna put my X values. So I'm gonna put one, enter, two, enter, and three, okay? So I'm just doing my x values here that I have over here, okay? Now I'm gonna come over to list two, so I'm just gonna hit over on my button, okay? That hit, gets me to list two, and I'm gonna put my y values, four, enter, five, enter, and eight, enter, okay? So I have in list one my x values, I have in list two my y values, and now I'm gonna go back to stat, okay? And now I'm gonna hit over 
I'm going to hit over and I'm going to go to calculate. And right here, this is our this is what we want right here is this linear regression. So go down, you can go down to linear regression or you can just hit the number 4. Press enter. And what this does is it asks you, what do you want your list to be? So if you just always put it in list one and list two, that's the default. If for some reason you don't have list one and list two in there, um, you can go and you can pick a different one. So you can actually just, if you look down here, see the L1 and the L2 and the L3, you would just press second one to get L1, and then you would come down to the Y list, do second two to get L2. And then I'm just going to, because I already have those, I'm going to scroll down. Don't worry about the frequency list or the store thing. Just come down to calculate and press enter. And look at that. Isn't that cool? So, so <laughs> I'm sure you're like, yeah, that's really cool, Sarah, that we could have done this. Um, we could have done this all without that whole mess that we just did. But this is exactly what we saw, right? We saw that A was 2 and B was 5 thirds and 5 thirds is 1.6 repeating. Now I would rather your answers be in fractions. I don't, let me check something really quick. If you go to math and you go to fraction, it will put, yeah, it didn't quite do that. It will put things in fractions for you. So, um, you know, 1 and 1, 6. So I'm going to, um, Second, if you do second enter, you can do second enter again, and that gives you your entry. So I'm going to come back to this. Um, so the 1.666667, you'll just have to kind of see that that's going to be five thirds. Um, that's clearly one and two thirds. So that's how you can see that fraction. If it doesn't look like it's going to be a nice fraction, I'm fine with you leaving it as decimals. Maybe go out three or four decimal places um, to do so. But I hope that helps. I hope that makes sense. Um, the calculator is much, much, much easier. But I do, I did assign you one problem. I want to see you use the partial derivatives. But other than that, you may use your calculator to determine the linear regressions. Um, in the book, you know, they kind of go over um, all this stuff with some crazy notation where you have to add up a bunch of x times y and, and a bunch of different things. You do not have to do that. You can use your calculator. Again, if you don't want to use the calculator, just let me know and I will let you, I will give you those formulas for the test. So the things you need to be able to do, find, to do the partial derivatives to find the line of least fit or the line of best fit. And then also, unless I tell you to do that, every other time you can use the calculator. All right, you guys, as always, let me know if you have any questions.